Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Welcome to Education Matters on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host today, Carol Mon Lee. Our show is called HPU's Dual Credit Program, College Credit While in High School, with my guests, Manny Segal, the Dean of HPU's College of Professional Studies, and Robert Wilson, HPU's instructor in the College of Professional Studies. Hawaii Pacific University has developed a dual credit course program for high school students, both on the Big Island and Oahu. Last year, HPU partnered with Honoka'a High School to offer college credit for two courses. Robert Wilson used video conferencing tools to teach writing and reading arguments and intro to communication skills from the HPU downtown Honolulu campus to high school students in Honoka'a. If you want to ask a question or make a comment, you can tweet us at ThinkTechHI or call us at 374-2014. So welcome to the show. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for having so us. So good to have you here. And I'm so particularly interested in this program because I think it's so valuable. Um, so we'll start out with you, Manny, because you're the dean and you're kind of the master behind all of these uh, in, important program. So tell us, how did it get started? Why is it important? And what are some of the problems and benefits in creating a dual credit program? Oh, good question, Carol. So when we take a look at something like this, we, we think that um, education empowers us for the future when it comes to us as an individual, taking a look at our families, taking a look at the community. And uh, it started with actually President Gotanda. Um, talking to the DOE, asking uh, where there was a need and what we could do to help for a university. And we're always taking a look at um, just contributing to society as well as what we can do here for the islands. And um, one thing led to another, and we were told that um, Honoka could use some help with some dual credit programs, some college credit courses. And it snowballed from there. So. Very exciting. Over the last year, we've been able to offer a couple of classes at Honoka'a. And, um, so what were the problems? What were they facing um, in Honoka'a, which, of course, is at the tip of the Big Island right, and uh, not right. near Hilo or Kona or any other that's larger right. town or city? So I guess it was more geogra geographical than anything else, uh, trying to, it was, uh, like you said, remote and trying to get uh, another institution to come in and possibly teach a few classes there. Um, it had started off a few years ago, and it fizzled out. And oh, that's, oh, so another, uh, another, another university, another college was there. I see. And so um, that led to an opportunity for us to, again, help out. So what we're talking about now are high school students, and these must be students who are very um, uh, high level in terms of wanting to uh, aggressively learn more than just what the high school curriculum is offering. Is that right? Definitely, definitely. They're very motivated. Um, it's also taking a look at some students that possibly never thought that they would even attend college, go to college, or just didn't even think about it, and to give them the opportunity to actually Take. Take, take a college course, see how it is, and hopefully decide that, hey, this is for me, it's doable. I, I, I can, you know, I can, t I can complete the course and continue on to an associate's or a bachelor's degree. So does Honoka'a High School offer H AP courses, advanced placement courses for college credit? Yes, they do. They do already. And so I was wondering at the beginning, why would we offer college courses when they have AP courses? Correct, yeah. Um, so what was the reason why would they decide to do this? Then? Well, a couple of things. AP courses are typically spread over the whole year, and the college courses are one semester. So your so, courses are only offered one by semester. Correct. Okay. So we're actually following Honoka'a's bell schedule and their day schedule. We're fitting their calendar rather than ours, but it's still a semester. And so they're meeting four days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Uh, you know, Wednesday they get out early. But they're meeting during their seventh period. Um, so again, why not AP courses? Well, in some places, AP courses, the pass rate is only 5%. Really? So well, you score at a certain level. You score right? at a certain so you're level. you're saying exactly. at a 3, 4, 5 score is only attainable by 5% of the students. In some places, yeah. Uh -huh. So it. it it's, it's lower than, let's say, a college course. Because a college course, um, it's shorter. Uh, we also depend on the school to select the students. 
uh, we make final say, but uh, we're asking the advisors for their recommendations. Who, who's ready academically and who's ready in terms of motivation? I see. So is there a test to get into the college level course that HPU offered? We have a placement test for writing and we would have one for math too, uh, but we rely mostly on their recommendation. recommendation. Yeah. I see. And so how, how, how many students, how big is Honaka High School and how many students actually enrolled in your course? I think it's about 660, something like that. Mm -hmm. Enrollment, oh. not at, at Honoka. At, at Honoka. Yeah, I think it's both the high school and middle school, or is that it just It is the intermediate also. I see. Honoka high and intermediate. I see. And so then you were able to establish uh, a college credit course for mm -hmm. both the fall and the spring. Mm -hmm. And did the students have to pay for it? They did not. Uh, we were. Uh, we had a donor graciously put, set up the funds for us and uh, able to pass it along to the students and that included their textbooks as well. So there was no cost to any of the students who participated in the program. What a wonderful uh, opportunity <laughs> for these students to get college credit mm -hmm. without paying for it and then being able to uh, transfer to mm -hmm. colleges, is that's that right? That's right, that's right. And a shout out to our generous donor as well. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us, how many credits was your course? And tell us about the course that you actually taught then at Honoka. Okay, the regular college courses, so three credit hours, which involves six, uh, excuse me, 40 hours of instruction, just like our main campus courses. Um, the Honoka fall course was introduction to it was uh, freshman writing, Fresh, uh, freshman writing. Uh, heavy dose of argument, formal argument in the writing. The school requested that, and then for the second term we offered communications, uh, introdu introduction to communication. That was, uh, again, 40 hours of instruction. I was qualified to teach both, so I continued on from the fall to the spring. So mechanically tell us how that works. So you're here in Honolulu at the mm -hmm. HPU campus in downtown Honolulu, which is right there, our background, the beautiful mm -hmm. background of Aloha Tower. And the students are all the way in Honoka'a in their classroom. It's actually, I think we have a picture of uh, Rob, and, uh, what he sees, uh, it's in the library. Yes, so tell us what that, what is that picture of? That's the students uh, taking their final exam. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And they're sitting in the library. And how many students? That's the first semester or the second? That's the first semester. There were 18 who signed up. Uh -huh. uh, one dropped within the first week just for scheduling conflicts. Right. But all 17 made it to the end. Uh -huh. And where are you in all of this picture? They're sitting there at their long tables, um, quietly what, writing an exam. And you're facing them in a, on a screen? Uh, actually, I'm there. Oh, you're physically there. <laughs> yeah, that one you went to. Case. Right, for the first day of the term and the last day. I see. Okay, great. And, but typically, all the other classes, four days a week, you said, for was it 40 minutes a day? You're uh, on a screen. I'm on a screen. Um, I can make it as big. I can fill up my image on mm -hmm. the screen. Mm -hmm. um, so they see me very well. I have limited ability to zoom in on them. So what you saw in that image of the class, um, I have to pretty much know who's who sitting where because I can't see all the details of their face and whether they're understanding. I see. I can see whether they're looking down at their phones. <laughs> <laughs> so what kind of equipment are you using then long distance from here and what do they have there? Did that include purchase of equipment? Was there a need to purchase new equipment? We had some new equipment. Uh, longer term, uh, our tech person is looking to move it up a notch to make it more interactive so that the video can zoom. Uh, I can see them more. Uh, we can have more mics positioned around the room. We had one central mic um, so I can hear what these two students are whispering to each other. Uh, is there a camera person there in Honoka'a? They have the tech person there on standby. His office is right off to the side. So he, he sets a, it up every day. Is he an HPU person? Or no, he, he works in Honoka'a. So he's a tech person for the high school. Correct. Who helps sets it up. Yeah. And uh, you are then remote here in Honolulu, mm -hmm. but live. But live, yes. During the period. Yeah. So um, they can see me. We both log in at the same time. Uh, I can log in before him or vice versa. We're on the same account, basically. We use a software called Zoom. It's an online yes. uh, video conferencing uh, uh, software. Uh, we would like to upgrade in the future. The tech person has a very good idea of how we could make this more interactive. There are smart whiteboards that we could set up on both ends. 
So I can have a student on the classroom side write something on the whiteboard and it shows up on my whiteboard Ah. and vice versa. Uh -huh. That way we wouldn't have to zoom in on the board to see what I'm writing or what they're writing. So, so Manny, is there a plan to acquire this kind of extra? Th there is. So we've got um, we've got an amazing CIO, Cody Down, and uh, and his staff and team, and and Mark Nita, who happens to be a, a former grad of Honoka. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So he um, he's very familiar with the, the way things are and set up, and he still have a lot, he still has a lot of connections there. So now uh, he works at of, HPU. He works at HPU with us uh, under the under the CIO, and mm -hmm. so he's in the IT department, and. He has been amazing when it comes to being instrumental in setting things up and what we need and what we, what we could do to improve things. So we're always looking at continuous improvement to make sure that, that, that there is a seamless flow right. uh, when it comes to communication for, for the students and, you know, and their instructor, and Rob in this case. Right. Yeah. So I guess I'm interested in two things then. First, the technology and then the, 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 the uh, type of uh, uh, the curriculum itself but so as far as the technology then so this is really distance learning which many of us have known for a long time mm -hmm. right higher education has used distance learning different campuses and all that so how is, does this differ from the distance learning that we've all heard about in the past? Typically distance learning is asynchronous which, asynchronous. Me which yeah. means that the students can access the material anytime they want it doesn't have to be they don't have to be online the same time as a teacher Ah, and so the teacher is not actually live during the time, the period. Yes, that's yeah. right. I see. So we want it to be synchronous so we can see what they're... And they're all at the same time, the same place, same place. hearing you, right. hearing the same information, and then they can hear each other's questions. Yes, and when I hear their question, they could, everybody can hear my answer. Yeah. So do you think that's a better way of learning for high school students? Definitely. Um, why is that? Well, let's say if we went to a podcast. If I just recorded right. the lecture and posted it. Which college level courses are often yes, like that. And it, uh, then it yes, turns yes. into an online class that's asynchronous and it really cuts down the interactivity. Right. Yes, you could use discussion board, you could use email, uh, but I'd chat like Chat rooms. Chat yeah, rooms, right. yes. And the online courses do use that and do use it successfully. Um, but then the question is why gather the students in one place? And I think if we let the students go off one-on-one, -on -one, uh, off on their own, they might not do it. Right. It's a different, completely different experience. Right. Okay. Now let's talk about the actual content of the courses. How did you find the students able to um, participate and to learn and to um, be equivalent of high school freshmen, a college freshman? It was a challenge with the writing uh, because the way I teach my course, it's more uh, contemporary issues, topics. Mm -hmm. Um, terrorism, uh, <laughs> educational reform, uh -huh. and they don't have much real world experience beyond the high school level. Mm -hmm. uh, so I had to adjust my topics to their interest and through their knowledge level. I see. Of course I assign articles that they can read uh, that prepare them for the final. And the final is a problem solution essay. Uh, how should the U.S. government, for example, deal with this problem? I see. Or educational reform. How should Hawaii change its education? Okay. Should high school be required? Okay. Big questions like that. Well, we're going to go to break. And okay. after the break, I want to come back and ask you, how did the students do? Okay. okay. So this is Education Matters with Think Tech Hawaii. Uh, and my guests, Rob Wilson and Manny Segal from HPU, will be right back. I'm getting older. Do I need to worry about falling? Yes, you do. Each year, one in four people 65 and older will experience a fall, and many will be serious. The majority of falls happen at home, so remove things that could make you trip and install handrails to keep you steady. To learn more about the steps you can take to help prevent a fall, please talk to your doctor. You can also visit aarpfoundation.org or medicaremadeclear.com slash falls. This message was brought to you by United Healthcare and AARP Foundation. 
Hi everyone, I'm Andrea Gabrieli. I'm the host for Young Talents Making Way here on FinTech Hawaii. We talk every Tuesday at 11 a.m. about things that matters to tech, matter to science, uh, to the people of Hawaii with some extraordinary guests. The students uh, of our schools who are participating in science fair. So Young Talents Making Way every Tuesday at 11 a.m. only on FinTech Hawaii. Mahalo. Uh, welcome back. This is Carol Mon Lee with Education Matters and my guest talking about a dual credit program established by Hawaii Pacific University and uh, its different locations. So we ended the last first half by talking about the exam that you gave to the 17 mm -hmm. Honakaha High School students. Uh, and you had two classes, one in the fall and the spring. So how did they do taking a college level class? The writing course in the fall, um, I was pleasantly surprised that they, they all finished. Uh, not all passed, uh, so we have pass rates that are very comparable to what we have on the main campus, real college classes. And what is that? What's the pass rate? Uh, for this one, I think it was about 70, 80 percent. Passed? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. And the second term, uh, we had 10 students, and those 10 were actually continuing from the fall, same students, uh, so they got two courses. Uh, we had seven out of 10 pass. And how many credits did they get? Three credits for each. Three. Three credits for each, which they can now transfer. It's on their transcripts. That's mm -hmm. right. So it was also able to use for their college, high school graduation requirements? They yes. were, actually, yes. Yes, so they get high school and college credit. Great, so and they did not have to pay a penny for the course? No, they did not. Wonderful, what a great opportunity. I think we have a picture of the, of the um, group of students. Uh, one more image. Okay, so Rob, tell us, this is from the first semester or the second semester? Uh, that was first semester, uh -huh. and I think that was the first day. I okay. went over there for the first day of class and for the last day of class. I'm uh -huh. there on the right, uh -huh. and we're in the library building. Um, I was okay. going to say that's an old student on the right, but no, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, great. Okay, so let's talk. So that was. So tell me, how did you think it went? If you evaluated the program for the first year, uh, some of the pros and cons of of this. Dual, dual credit program? That's a good question. Good learning on both sides. Yeah. Uh, I, there are many things I would change to make it better. How would you, do, uh, what would you change? Uh, well, the, we start with talking with the advisor at Honoka or whichever school we're at. How would you like us to treat the students? Do you Maybe. want us to treat them just like normal college students, give the assignment, let them go? Or do you want us to have more shepherding involved? And should that shepherding come from me, the instructor, or you, the advisor, on your end? And what did you do this year without uh, knowing? They, their decision was to treat them like normal college students. And I think we could get a higher pass rate if the advisor had the permission to just step in and say, how are you doing? Are you keeping up in your homework? And I could keep the advisor apprised of what's going on, who might need some I little see. nudging or pushing or pulling. I, that seems to make sense because you're acknowledging on one hand that they're intellectually capable of mm -hmm. college level courses, but physically, emotionally, they still may be high. They are high school they students. Are. Time, yeah, time exactly. So yeah, okay. Well, and that's if, another good thing. If it was a face-to-face -face class on the main campus, <clears throat> and I saw a student who's falling behind and not right. turning in assignments, I would have that student come to my office. Regardless of the fact they're already college students, right? Because right. right. you're a small school that has, is able to have the hands-on, one-on-one with students, and that's, so. yeah, that's right. why people choose HP. Yeah. Okay, great. Any benefits that you found that were beyond what you had expected? Hmm. I think just the opportunity that we were able to provide the students yes. was phenomenal. Yes. And um, just to know that we are able to to help in a certain way to help ready our students right. of the future mm -hmm. to take a look at college and again to let them know that they're they're capable they're ready they have the opportunity and if they would like to continue to to take more dual credit courses it actually helps with their family when it comes to the financial side of things Absolutely. going to college afterwards saving time and money exactly, right exactly. they graduating in yeah. 4 years they can maybe graduate in less That's saving right. That's credit right. and they can they 
I understand that they actually feel now that they can manage college. Yeah, exactly. Right? They have a sense exactly. that this is something that they could do. It's not, can I do it? I have done it. Right. Yeah. So, okay, let's talk about the future now. So what's happening? Are you going to go back to Honokaha? What other schools do you have? Uh, what, what other schools you've been working with? So we, we love dealing with Honokaha, and we love the students at Honokaha, and we, we great experience, so we are ready to go back in the fall. And you have uh, all the technology ready. We yes. do, and we're constantly improving that as well. So um, we're looking right now at um, discussing with the principal and the counselor with regards to what courses their students would be interested in taking, mm -hmm. and uh, we're, we're ready to offer that in the fall. And we're trying to expand it, actually, to maybe even offer a couple of courses each semester just taking a look at logistics and how we would run things wow. right now. Right. Mm -hmm. And what about Oahu? I know that there's some schools on Oahu. That so yes, we, we have a partnership of five schools all together. So we also have uh, St. Andrew's schools uh, right down the street from us downtown. We have Island Pacific Academy. We have Kamehameha schools. And we also have Marinol. Wonderful. So have you already started some of those partnerships? We actually have started all of them, all within the last couple of years. St. Andrew's Schools has been with us a long time affiliation. Mm -hmm. and um, How does that work? It's not the same distance learning issues you have, Exactly, right? exactly. So with St. Andrew's Schools, uh, currently it's uh, the girls that are sophomores, juniors, seniors, they actually come to our campus mm -hmm. and they'll take a course that is just regularly offered. And so blend right in and, and re regular college students and they take the course and they get credit for it. And again, they're able to take that anywhere they go or if they want to stay with us, they automatically to get that college credit ahead of time. So um, helping them finish earlier, helping them financially, but also helping them complete their degree uh, to a better degree earlier and then being, I guess, entering the workforce quicker. Right. Well, so, so do they have to apply to college first to be admitted to take these courses, or they're still in high school? They're still in high school, so they'll fill out a special status form with us, and that allows them to take three to four classes with us at HPU um, without, without, being being, enrolled without being enrolled as a freshman. As a freshman, exactly. I yes. see. And then yes. tuition again, how is that paid for? So each so good question. Each individual school uh, is set up a little bit differently. So I would probably encourage um, if there's a student out there or a school out there to come and talk to us directly, and we'll see what we can do. But there is no cost to the student. No cost, no to, cost, the no cost to the student. And so, and it's your regular curriculum. So if you have is, your yes. writing course mm -hmm. uh, in place at HPU downtown campus, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So you might have. How many students do you typically have in your class? Writing courses, I think, are capped at uh, 18. 18, and of those, you could have then some HP, uh, some Priory, St. Andrews Priory mm -hmm. students, mm -hmm. maybe a high school students, mm -hmm. part of it. But you would still have some college students in there, too. Yes. The first time we had the Marinol students on campus, mm -hmm. I was their instructor. Mm -hmm. uh, it was an unusual situation, uh, but we had them uh, together in one class. So we had the uh, six students come in, five of them placed into my class in terms of writing, and then we had five other regular college students in that class. So it was a good mix, uh, but now in subsequent terms, they're all diffused throughout the regular sections, so they're not kept together. Did you find, do they blend in pretty well then with the freshmen? They do. Sometimes they the instructors have no idea that they're, they're 16 or 17 years old. Right. And so are your exams blind exams? You know, do you know the name of the student who's writing an exam? Or? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, our classes are so small. It's, yeah, it's yeah. hard to have blind. Yeah. <laughs> Law schools always have blind exams. Yeah, so. that's right. Yeah. And so what uh, you said, you have how many more schools? You have Honoka yeah, and you have so all these other schools, we, local schools, we, for we this do. coming year. That's right. Yes, we do. Yeah. We, so Island Pacific Academy is a little different where we actually hold the classes on their campus. I see. And they're open to HPU students as well as uh, Island Pacific Academy students as well. How, how exciting. Yeah. So you offer so many different um, programs with different schools. Is this something that other universities and colleges do regularly offer high school level offer courses for high school students uh uh does uh, -huh. uh they have i think starting this fall they have something called the manoa academy for uh different school students i, th I know that saint francis right across from uh they'll be able to send some students to manoa oh, academy right. starting the fall mm -hmm. uh, the early start program mm -hmm. uh, same idea mm -hmm. Great. And do you need funding? How is that working? How do you support? How does HPU um, 
Is this part of your regular day-to-day -day budgeting? Uh, so what we're looking at right now, again, is each, each school is done individually, but um, we try and make sure that nothing is passed on to the student. So this is strictly a complete benefit for the student and um, from textbooks right on to taking the course, they save on the tuition. Mm -hmm. So really to encourage all students to take a look at the capabilities that are within and take the chance, take the chance of, of taking that college course and, and getting a chance to do it before you actually go, out, go off to college or, right. or you know, if you're staying right on island, um, getting that opportunity experience beforehand so you feel comfortable when you actually do. And, and, and so you have to work closely then with the each school to they actually select or take care of the enrollment of the students. Is that right? Right now they do. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we make sure that um, the respective school hand selects their students, and then we also, uh, once we get the students, we'll do a double check and make sure everything's good and that they have the proper prerequisites and ah. and. and um, and we want to make sure we set up our students for the success. Exactly, of, of, exactly. Of and, how, and how do you measure experience. success then? I mean, we know the pass rate for Honoka, and maybe mm -hmm. next year if you did more hands-on with the students, it might even be higher. Mm -hmm. But what? How else would you measure success? Is this a program that's growing for HPU? We are. We are hoping it does. So we're, we're anticipating it does, and we are um, just taking a look at giving back whatever we can to to, to the islands. Yeah. Oahu and, and the neighbor islands and, and um, how about yeah, any other just, neighbor islands uh, possibilities possible. are open yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, we're excited the way things have been going so far so uh, nothing but positive and we are looking to again continue and expand Great. an example with uh, Marino uh, the students at Marino come to HPU full-time Oh. Mm -hmm. So they're the, they send us some of their best and brightest. Uh -huh. uh, they go full time at HPU during the day. In the afternoon, they go back to Marino for their religion class and their right. sports and clubs. That's right. mm -hmm. uh, so at the end of two years, they would have their high school diploma and an associate's degree. Oh my goodness! Well, that's and they haven't paid really any exciting. HPU tuition. Yeah, that's so they amazing. save fifty thousand dollars. So two full years. Wow. Two full years of their college degree. Well, this, is, this time has gone by so fast, so I'm just going to, we only have a few seconds left, and, and Manny, I'm going to let you look in the camera for it and just tell our audience, our viewers, how they can contact you in case they have more questions, whether it's schools, administrators, or students. Yeah, so you can actually uh, shoot me an email. It's uh, msegal at hpu.edu, and I think it's on the screen right now. Right. And uh, we would be happy to talk to you as an individual, if you're a student, if you're a parent, if you're a specific school administrator, and we would, yeah, we, we could probably get this turned around within a few months so that uh, your students could take advantage of taking the college credit classes as soon as possible. Great. So. Well, thank you so much, Rob. Thank you so much, Manny. This yeah. has been a, a really important topic, I think, mm -hmm. and something that I think our viewers should be very interested in, especially in this economic time and in this time where students uh, have high levels of interest and opportunity to actually take college-level courses. Thank, thank you for thank having you. us. Yeah, thank thank you. you. Well, that brings us to the end of our show today. We've enjoyed bringing it to you. I'm your host, Carol Mon Lee, and we've been talking about HPU's dual credit program, College Credit While in High School, with Manny Segal and Rob Wilson. If you want to see the show again, go to thinktechhawaii.com or youtube.com slash thinktechhawaii, where there will be a link to this show and many more just like this one. As you may know, Think Tech Hawaii is a 501c3 Hawaii nonprofit digital media company dedicated to raising public awareness about issues and events that affect our lives together in these islands. To keep us going, we need support from our underwriters and viewers just like you. Please help us by making a donation on our homepage at thinktechhawaii.com. Aloha, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.